Hello, my name is Jeff Passmore. I work for JDSU's Sales Support Organization. And I'll be your host today on the first of uh, three, three uh, recorded videos covering the HST 3000's TDR. In this introductory video, we'll cover the basic mode of operation or theory of operation for TDR, what it's good at, what it's not so good at. The second installment will cover the auto ID uh, TDR uh, feature built into the HST. And, and the third and final one will cover manual uh, mode TDR in the HST. So let's begin. Uh, what you're looking at here is a, is a uh, handout document provided by JDSU. So it's sort of a, a nice reference guide. TDR stands for Time Domain Reflectometer. It's kind of a fancy word for radar or sonar. TDRs are pretty basic uh, instruments in my, in, as far as a theory of operation is concerned. They, they do one thing incredibly well, in, in my opinion, and, and that is count time. They have a, a, a supercharged clock, a very, very accurate uh, clock built into them. They basically work by sending out a pulse of high frequency energy. The high frequency energy is traveling down the cable pair at a known speed because you, the operator, tell the TDR how fast it's traveling. That high frequency energy is looking for something called an impedance irregularity. Well, that's a $25 word for a fault or a major difference between tip or ring. When the energy hits the impedance irregularity, some of it is bounced back to the TDR. Therefore, the radar or sonar anal analogy or comparison. Well, since the TDR knows how fast the energy is traveling, and since it has such a accurate clock built into it, all it does is a simple time to distance equation. So that's basically how they work. Any good TDR instruction starts off with a discussion about what they're good at and what they're not so good at. So what you're looking at here is a table that uh, reflects common faults on the left and whether or not the TDR is the preferred or non-preferred method for dealing with those faults. Low resistance faults across tip and ring, i.e. shorts. Well, TDR is pretty good at those if they're low resistance, right? They've got to be hard shorts, solid shorts, whatever terminology you use. Kind of back to that number thing from the, from the ohm meter, right? Gotta be a pretty darn solid short for the TDR to see it. Low resistance falls from tip or ring to ground. Well, TDRs are not all that good at uh, doing stuff to ground. When you think about it, they work across tip and ring. You hook a TDR up across tip and ring. Now, there are some sophisticated techniques you can employ to take a look for a ground, but they're kind of, they're sort of beyond what we're going to talk about in today's introductory session. Opens of all types. Uh, this is where the TDR really shines. It's the heavyweight champion of the world for opens. Double-sided opens, single-sided opens, high resistance opens, or series faults. Uh, TDR is, is very good at all of those. Bridge tap. Uh, the only thing out there that I know of that will show you the start of the tap, and if you're lucky, even show you the end. Water, or start of a wet section. Yeah. Probably should have a check mark in both columns here. The TDR is quite good at showing you the beginning of a wet section. However, if your fault is on the other side of the wet section of the water, the TDR loses a great deal of its accuracy. The reason for that is the water will slow down the speed of the signal. Well, anything that messes with the speed messes with the timing. Time is distance in the world of the TDR. So, water will affect accuracy. Aside from a high resistance open, the, that's the only high resistance thing the uh, TDR can do. Um, it's not going to find a high resistance short, a high resistance ground, or a high resistance battery cross. Not with the TDR. That's why you still have RFL capability built into your meter. Load coil. Uh, notice I've got a check mark in both preferred and non-preferred. Uh, TDR is certainly good at showing you the first load coil. But it cannot look past or see through the load coil. So therefore, it's, kind of, it's sort of limited. TDRs are subjective devices, especially manual mode TDRs, uh, because they return a, a picture back. It's a, sort of up to you, the user, to interpret the picture. Well, there are three basic rules for interpreting the picture or the return trace. Flat is good. 
The flatter the line, the more constant the impedance, the more tip looks like rain. A dip down is a lowering impedance, either caused by the short or start of a bridge tap. A dip up is a raised impedance, either caused by an open, partial open, or a load coil. Everything you look at in manual mode especially will be a combination of those three things, right? Flat, up, and down. Well, like all test set manufacturers, JDSU uh, supplies a handout, little plastic uh, overlaid uh, handout that uh, depicts what common uh, faults look like on the TDR. Now it sounds as though I'm kind of poking fun at this, uh, this little plastic cheat sheet, but um, not really. I mean, uh, it, it does a pretty good job of showing you what gross, obvious faults look like. But there's really no uh, no substitute for experience and, uh, you know, you looking at the trace. Uh, the more you get to view, the more you get to look at, the more you build your, your own mental library of how things should look uh, when you're on the cable pair. So that concludes our introductory uh, session on the TDR. Uh, please join us for part two where we cover the auto ID. So thank you.